Israel is the staunchest ally that the United States can have. And this is because the American people recognize that Israel is the only stable and staunchly pro-American democracy in the Middle East. There is no country in the region, arguably in the world, whose values are more aligned with the US and Israel. But it isn't only our shared values and love of freedom and democracy alone that tie us together. It is also our many common interests. Please consider the following. Today, the depth of US-Israeli military and intelligence relationship is unprecedented. And as Admiral Mullen stated in front of Congress, and I quote, the alliance with Israel is of extraordinary value. And he went on to say, Israel is absolutely critical to US national security. And frankly, it should be this way. Israel owes it to the United States, after all, because of all the United States does for Israel, including $3 billion in military aid per year, far more than any other country. Additionally, President Obama has also initiated the transfer of an incremental $205 million to Israel to support the development of the Iron Dome, which is there to protect people in Sderot and other cities around Gaza. When the United Nations Security Council tries to unjustifiably and cynically condemn Israel, or when the Palestinians attempt against all agreements to go to the same Security Council to get its backing for recognition of a Palestinian state, and I repeat, the Palestinians did this against all signed agreements, what happens? The US is there, time and time again, with its veto power to ensure that Israel's security and interests are protected. On the other side of the Middle East, in Iraq and Afghanistan, the lives of countless American soldiers have been saved by Israeli invented and built armored vehicles. Further, Israeli technology in unmanned vehicles has helped the United States inflict significant blows to Al Qaeda. And the list goes on and on of Israel's contribution to the US. Israel's on-the-ground capabilities in the region have contributed significantly to U.S. intelligence and that saves American lives every single day. There are very many areas of cooperation between our two countries, some known and some you can only guess and imagine. Thirty years ago, Secretary of State George Shultz declared that he wanted to ensure that the U.S.-Israel relationship put down such strong roots that it would never be uprooted. 30 years later, ladies and gentlemen, that objective has been achieved. So based, <laughs> so based on shared values and common interests, the US and Israel are one, or you could also say two nations united under God. Do these strong allies agree on everything? No. But we share a deep bond that is way above one individual or two, or any one disagreement or many. Which is why, as an Israeli American, I stand here tonight in front of you with great pride wearing that pin of the Israeli and American flags. I'd like to close I'd like to close with a couple of words on Iran. If anyone thinks that Israel will stake its existence on the naive prediction that a nuclear Iran under this regime can be contained or deterred, and that the Ayatollahs would not launch a nuclear attack on Israel, if anyone thinks that, then think again. For this is not the working assumption in Israel or the US. A Shia regime, this Iranian leadership, that is the world leader in export of terrorism, one that embraces martyrdom, one that has no quandrum at slaughtering its own people, one that calls for the destruction of the state of Israel, cannot and will not be deterred or contained. (Applause) 
They are extreme ideologues. They are thugs with fancy religious titles and they can't be trusted under any circumstance. So basically, they're a bunch of Michiganers and Michiganers should not have nuclear weapons. So, so ladies and gentlemen, both the US and Israel agree that the bottom line on Iran is this. A nuclear Iran is not an option and a second Holocaust will never be, never again. I'm Israel Chai. Thank you.